Hello and God bless. This is your brother Naftali. Today we're going to speak on a topic that is going to be highly controversial to a lot of people. To most of you it won't, but the reality is that the, I'm sure there are ministers who will be watching this video. I'm sure that there's going to be people who are going to share this with their pastor. Some people will even say that who am I to even speak out on such a subject. But I believe it's very important to speak on this. Let's go ahead and open up our Bibles. Exodus 9, 1 Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto the Pharaoh, and tell him, Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. If you read the book of Exodus, it's an amazing story of God delivering his people from the bondage of the Pharaoh. God wanted his people to serve him freely. God wanted his people to live in his truth. But his people were under bondage. And God said, let my people go. Fast forward to modern times. And we have a church who voluntarily is going back to the Pharaoh. Who voluntarily is going back to the bondage of the government we're talking about the state churches and we just have to call it what it is is it state church we're speaking on the 501c organization the corporate church as I mentioned this will be a controversial topic and I'm sure that a lot of you are much more experts than I am on this topic but understand that I'm not coming to upset you today I'm coming to hopefully challenge you today to start speaking of the truth of Jesus Christ in the church a lot of you have wondered for a long time how is it that we got to this place how is it that the church in the United States of America the church that for countless of years in the 40s 50s 60s sent forth so many missionaries across the globe revivals on every corner tent churches here and there but now it's filled with so much lukewarm entertainment within the church. The church no longer speaks on the issues that matter. The spoke the church is now quiet. The church is now strangled by the oppression of the 501c status. I know what some of you are going to say. I know a lot of you that are watching this already have that mentality that who is this kid speaking on this topic I understand I get it all the time all the time a lot of brothers and sisters have this same type of mentality that Brian Karn preaches exit churchianity brought this topic up on Facebook the other day she did a very good study on it but I'll play you a clip of Brian Karn so that you can see his thoughts on individuals like me speaking up on this topic God has never sent a member to correct the leader oh y'all quiet y'all don't like that kind of preaching do you God has never sent a lay member to correct the, that ain't your job your job ain't to correct your job is to pray I don't care what God showed you Keep your little sanctified mouth closed. Keep your little sanctified mouth closed. He says, I don't care what God showed you. Keep your little sanctified mouth closed. This is the attitude of a lot of preachers and teachers and ministers. And I can ensure you, I've met awesome brothers and sisters who are ministers, teachers, and preachers who are not like this. So don't throw everyone under the same category. But understand that within the church there is this type of a hierarchy mentality where the prophet, the teacher, the preacher, the pastor thinks that they're higher than another person. So you cannot come to them bringing correction. You cannot come to them and pull them aside and say, hey, that's a false teaching, my brother. Because they'll say, but how dare you come to me to speak such a thing? I am a prophet. You see, it's pride. And I don't care how nice your suit is. I don't care how many, and you know, ah, in the Lord, ah, and you start hyping it up. I don't care how many violins you have playing in the background while you're preaching. The reality is this. 
We are to preach the gospel and the gospel truth only. And if you're preaching false doctrine, the scripture tells the body of believers to exhort other brothers to walk in the faith of Jesus Christ. The scriptures say very clearly, 2 John 1, 10, 11. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him good speed. For he that biddeth him good speed is a partaker of his evil deeds. God says further, Ephesians 5, 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So God tells us to test the spirits. God tells us to reprove those that are bringing false teachings. Who are those that bring teachings? Teachers. Pastors. So if we're going to follow what Brian Karn says, you cannot correct a pastor, a teacher, a preacher. He says, I don't even care what God tells you. Keep your sanctified mouth shut. I hope that this is not your attitude today. Because I'm not coming to you exalting myself as if I know more than you about running a ministry. I'm just a brother who's concerned and who's sincerely tired of the attitude that a lot of pastors have. Pastors need to realize that they're pastors. They're not masters. The 501c church. About two months ago. Something occurred across America called Pul Sunday. The Pulpit Freedom Sunday. Where pastors across the United States of America. That are part of the 501c organization. All rebelled against the system. And for one Sunday, for one week, out of 52 weeks a year, they rebelled to preach the full truth of the gospel. I'm going to play a video so you can hear them. These men were all leaders of cultural change. They risked their reputations and even their lives to preserve liberty. They would not be silenced. What common ground do these nation-shaping leaders share? They were all pastors, pastors who, from their pulpit, advocated for religious freedom and opposed moral injustice. As a pastor, you face modern challenges, but the call to stand and proclaim scriptural truths about issues of cultural concern has not changed. In fact, that need has never been greater. Today, an entire generation is losing perspective on the social foundation of our nation, marriage. This June, the U.S. Supreme Court will decide two cases that could legally redefine marriage. The implications are profound, and the calling on pastors to proclaim God's design and ideal for marriage has never been stronger. This is not a Republican issue or a Democrat issue or an independent issue. This is not a race issue. This is an issue on marriage where God himself has designed it God himself has declared what it will be. Religious freedom is profoundly endangered right now, and it hinges more on one issue than any other, and that's the issue of the definition of marriage. We have people coming to our church who have voted for issues for so long simply because nobody ever stood up in the pulpit and said, these things are biblical issues, not political issues. Who would have thought 20 years ago that we would be debating what, what marriage is? Uh, that would have been thought inconceivable apart from a few extremists. The same-sex uh, marriage issue has been very key in thinking this is a wake-up call. What would have happened in the past if ministers, whether it be on the issue of slavery or other important issues in our country, had not been willing to speak out against those things which the scriptures tell us are evil? If I'm not speaking into their lives on the issues that, is, that have made the nation great and the issues that God cares about, then who is? In the next decade or so, what America will be for the next few hundred years, I believe, will be decided. On Sunday, June 9th, join with pastors across our nation in clearly declaring God's view on marriage by participating in Pulpit Freedom Sunday. Hear from fellow pastors, find a wealth of marriage resources, and learn more about Pulpit Freedom Sunday. Visit pulpitfreedom.org. Your voice will make a difference.
So basically, pastors are uniting that are part of the 501c church, not all of them. And they're saying, you know what? We're tired of this. We're tired of the restrictions that the government is putting upon us. So for one week out of a year, they're going to come together to preach the truth. And in the video themselves, you heard them. They're talking about the importance of preaching the truth. Yet they're only willing to do it for one week out of a year. Why? Because they're a part of the 501c church. And I don't want us to put all 501c churches in one book. Because what happens is there's a lot of different churches that are 501c that preach the full unadulterated word of God. But soon that is coming to an end. Very, very soon. There's a lot of atheist groups out there. They have a lot of money. And they're writing the government. And they're telling the government that it's unfair what these churches are getting away with. Why? Because when these churches sign over to the government, they do the following. They waive its right for freedom of speech. That's a fact. You cannot speak what you want to speak within the church. They now control what you can and what you cannot say. You may say, but my church isn't like that. You better get ready to make that decision. You better get ready. You better get ready. In fact, you may not even believe what I'm saying. So I'll just put the, the, the source that most people believe. Because nowadays when we preach the truth of the gospel, they'll say, oh, that's a conspiracy. Well, let me just put the media for you. Let me put the news. You'll believe the news. Let me put the news so that you can hear it from the source that most people will love to believe. How does President Obama get to 270 electoral votes? Well, his clearly strongest voter group is African Americans, and hundreds of preachers and other religious leaders are going to get a pep talk of sorts from members of the Congressional Black Caucus on how to combat the recent rise in voter ID laws. I'm joined now by the chairman of the Congressional Black Caucus, Congressman Emanuel Cleaver, Democrat from Missouri, who is also an ordained minister. Congressman, it's good to see you. Good morning. Good to be with you. So you've got this big summit tomorrow. Essentially what is your message to several hundred clergy members, I understand, who will be there? Yes, we'll have uh, representatives from nine denominations who actually pastor somewhere in the neighborhood uh, of about uh, 10 million people. And uh, we're going to, first of all, uh, equip them with the information they need to know uh, about what they can say and what they cannot say uh, in the church. Uh, about what they can say and what they cannot say uh, in the church, uh, about what they can say and what they cannot say uh, in the church uh, that would violate their 501c3 status with the IRS. In fact, we're going to have the IRS administrator there. We're going to have the Attorney General Eric Holder there. Uh, we're going to have the lawyers uh, organization from around the country, the ACLU, all giving ministers guidance on what they can and cannot do. So as you heard, the government has routinely meetings with churches. In this case, he was going to meet with the pastors of approximately 10 million members in the United States, equipping them with what they can and with what they cannot say. This is your government speaking. Your government is saying this. Something's wrong with that, don't you think? Is there not something wrong with that? I believe there's something wrong with that. You see, because when you become a 501c church, you become a corporation. And when you become a corporation, the one who is sovereign over you is no longer Christ. It's now the state. Because you have to answer to the state for everything you say. And when you're trying to preach the truth... You have to tiptoe over what to say, what not to say, because if you say the wrong thing, you're running the risk of them taking away your status. Now, some brothers and sisters out there are on fire for the Lord, and they'll preach whatever, whenever, and they can take away whatever they want from them, and they don't care. And maybe that's you. But I'll be honest with you, at this point in time, my friend, we are living in a generation where God is asking of brothers, of sisters, of people, of God to come out from among them scriptures tell us very clearly come out from among them first peter 5 2 
Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucres, but of a ready mind. God has asked leaders, because within the church we have a syndrome where everybody wants to be called something. I want to be a this title, I want to be a that title. But they don't want the responsibilities that come with the titles. God has called you to feed the church. God has called you to feed the full truth of the gospel to the church. Not partial. And then we wonder why the Masonic invasion has happened in this country. Then we wonder how is it that we have so many Masonic symbols in our government. Then we wonder, how is it that we have so many Masonic pastors within the church? Then we wonder why the power of God is not visible within many churches nowadays. Then we wonder why is it that this is happening? Well, how can it not happen when the pastors who God has called to feed the church have signed over their rights? And just as when God pulled them out of Egypt and said, let my people go. These pastors are walking right back to Egypt into bondage. And then when you come to them and say, Oh dear pastor, oh dear leader, watch out, you're going back to bondage. They'll say, Oh, you're in rebellion. I get it every day. Every day. What church do you go to? Well, I just, you know, I have fellowship at home and I run a ministry. I spend about 30, 40 hours a week in ministry. Yeah, but what church do you go to? And my reply is, well, what church does your pastor go to? Because according to you, your pastor has to also attend the church for him to be a man of God. How can I go to a, church, a local congregation when I'm spending 34 hours a week and I have an online congregation that we fellowship consistently? But you're in rebellion. Well, how is it that I'm in rebellion? Because you don't have a spiritual covering. Well, my spiritual covering is Jesus. That can't be. Well, why can't it be? Because you need a spiritual covering. And then it goes right back around in circles. We need to stop playing these immature games within the church. We need to stop playing these little kitty games within the church. And we need to get right with God. And we need to start preaching His Word. And we need to stop worrying about how the bills are going to get paid. And we need to just preach the gospel. But all of this right now is sounding like craziness to some people out there. 2 Corinthians 6.17 Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate. Saith the Lord. This is the Lord saying this. And touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. When the church signs over its rights to go back into bondage to the state, it is a state corporation and it is a state church. Do you understand that? Do you know how many other state churches there are? There's Wiccan state churches. Satanist churches. They're all 501c. You don't want to be in that company. You want to come out from among them. You see, when God says come out from among them, He doesn't say it so that you walk around prideful. I'm better than everybody else. And that's not what I'm saying. You see, it's a dangerous thing to the kingdom of Satan. For people to be walking in the statutes and the commandments of God. You see, because if the body of Jesus Christ is operating in the truth of the scriptures, do you know how many people will be saved? If the body of Christ would be operating in love, in charity, in holiness, in kindness, we would be separate of this world. And people will say, Who are those people? They're so different. But what's different of the church today? What's different? Maybe today you're saying to yourself, but how am I going to do all this, Tally? I get what you're saying, but you have to realize that my church depends on the 501c status to pay the bills. Or what if somebody sues me? That's another one that I've heard. Well... You cannot operate under the spirit of fear, can you? 
For God has not given us a spirit of fear, has he? Has he? Because that's the number one pe reason why people incorporate, because they're afraid of lawsuits. There's a scripture talking about lawsuits as well. The bottom line is this. We have to make a choice. Will we go back to Egypt? Now that God has set us free, will we go back to Egypt? Or will we, will we walk in the freedom of Jesus Christ and be a free church? Ever since the 1950s when I believe Lyndon Johnson made the whole 501c status for the church, the church has been going downhill. And the reason that people incorporate is because they believe all of the myths associated with it. If people knew the reality that the church before that point in time never paid taxes. But the church today has become a very big business. And sadly, 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 when the government starts cracking down, many will choose the status over the truth. Acts 20, 28. Take heed therefore yourself unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. If you have the dignity to call yourself a pastor, if you say I'm a leader, I'm a pastor, I'm a this, okay, okay. You better realize that God is going to hold you accountable for preaching the full truth to the people that God has provided around you for you to lead. Do you understand that? I hope you realize that today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that all of those brothers and sisters who are watching this video, that we may all understand that in our lives, we fall very short of the glory of the living King. That this video is not made to point fingers, but rather to bring us all back to the basics. Back to you. What good is it for a church to have a mega building if they don't have the power of the living God? What good is a church of thousands if God's presence is not in there? What good is it having a Mercedes, a Benz, a gymnasium, a coffee shop, a gym in the church if they're all going straight to the pits of hell? What good? What good is it having a little bit extra funds at the end of the year because you don't have to pay a certain amount of taxes, but your church, the flock that is God's flock, is going home hungry because the pastors aren't feeding them. Remind your people. Remind your people of the responsibility that we have on this earth. Jesus, I hear so much talk of you're coming. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Well, why don't you worry about making sure that you preach the gospel so that when he dunks, come people get saved. Yes, we want to warn people that Jesus is coming. But I see so many people that want to get out of this earth already, and I understand your frustration. I want to go home too. But I would much rather wait a little bit longer on this earth and ensure that more people get saved so that when we get to heaven, it'll be an awesome banquet and an awesome wedding. Let's go back to the basics, family. Let's go back to the basics. May God bless you.